Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at Posit. And today, in this screencast, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on how many times Roy Kent says the word in the TV show Ted Lasso. This data set was created by Deepshaw Mangani for her very funny, very excellent talk at PositConf last week, and I'm really excited to get to explore it because it really gives us an opportunity to talk about how to use bootstrap resampling for confidence intervals, and also is a great application of Poisson regression, which is a really nice tool to have in your toolkit as a someone who works with data. Let's get started. All righty, let's get started here with this very fun data set. So, um, like I said in the intro, uh, Deepshaw put together this data herself. She curated and created this data set and she made it available in this, um, in this package here, like so. And let us um, take a look at what it, we have here. So this is, the, the character is all, um, is all character, there we go, is all Roy Kent, right? So um, this is about Roy Kent speaking during the episodes. There, notice that there's only 34 rows because we only have 34 episodes of, um, of Ted Lasso. So this is not what you would call big data, but still, we um, is super interesting. We talk about how to um, use it. So we have the episode overall, season episode, a little um, string that combines that information for us. And then this is the counts of how many F-bombs Roy Kent uses per episode. And, um, and then there are some other ways of like counting it over in the um, in the episode overall, some cumulative information, some dividing of this, and then two flags here: the dating flag and the coaching flag. So is Roy Kent dating Keely, and is he coaching? Is he coaching during that? Um, that episode. And we have IMDb rating too, but we're going to mainly focus on three of these variables. So we are going to um, look at the counts per episode here and we let's make a um let's make a histogram where we can see this difference here. Let's start with dating. Um whoops. Ooh. There we go. Um there we go. All of a sudden, I forgot how to make a plus. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make um, identity like this. Make a little histogram showing the counts per episode. Um, this, let's change the bins way down. This is, again, this is not a big data set. Make this a little easier to see, and I think this might be easier to see if we used a different color. I'll use the a Brewer palette. Um, a nice one is accent, like this. Okay, ah, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, I think. Um, that lavender and green, I think, is okay. Uh, maybe it would be better if I use. There's like a dark two or something. That one. Yeah, maybe that one's better. Okay, so here um, we're comparing when they are dating versus they are not. Is there a difference there? Maybe, maybe. That one's a little hard to see. And then let's do the same thing for the coaching flag. Like that. Um, that one, you know, like that one looks more like uh, there's a difference, but this is a very small data set. So when I make, and these are very important plots to make, but um, I would like to use statistical modeling to get a better understanding if we see differences um, in, the, in these two categories. So when you have a small data set like this, one of my favorite approaches to use is bootstrap resampling. So um, there are two, I'm, what I'm about to write is very little code. 
which is exciting and great, but it does mean like, let's talk a little bit about what we are doing. So the first thing I want to point out is I'm going to be using Poisson regression. Um, these are counts per episode. And so we don't really want to use linear regression, even though it's a number. What we really want to use is Poisson regression because it is, you know, a good fit for this kind of count data, right? We go from I don't know if there's any zeros, but we go from maybe zero up to um, up to a lot, to like over 25 or something like that. So we're going to use Poisson regression, and then we are going to not fit a Poisson model one time to the um, data set of 34 episodes, but instead we are going to fit it a thousand times. So we're going to fit the model a thousand times to bootstrap resamples of this 34 um, this 34 row data set, and then we'll get a thousand fits at the end. And those thousand fits will let us have a thousand different estimates of these effects, the effects of um, coaching and the effects of dating. And with that, we can get a better understanding of like what, with, from this underlying, from this data we have, um, how strong of evidence do we have for an effect of either one of those. So it's, it's, we're going to use a function from the R sample package and it is um, reg intervals like this. So this helps us get confidence intervals with parametric models. So we can put in the model function that we want here and then through the dots we can pass other uh, things to the model function like family. And so this is where we put Poisson is in here. Um, we can do, um, we can, these are going to be um, student T intervals. We could do percentile intervals instead if we wanted. Times um, uh, is how many times is it going to make these resamples? It will do, I'm going to not set that, so it's going to do 1,001. Um, so let's see how we will do this. So our our here's our function. So I want to um, I want to predict the counts with two predictors: the dating flag and the coaching flag here. Now the data. Let's pop this back up. The data that I'm going to use is this Richmond way. And then um, the model function that I'm going to use is a generalized linear model. So not LM, but GLM. And then I do want to pass family through. So let me say Poisson like that, because I want a Poisson model, not a, not a logistic um not a logistic regression, I want Poisson regression because I'm predicting counts here. And then I am going to say keep reps equals true so that I get all of those. So I, um, I'm going to keep all of the thousand fits. Let's call this Poisson intervals like this. And let me set a seed because this will use randomness for, uh, for the resampling. So I'm going to get a thousand different resamples of this result. Okay, super tiny. So you can fit a thousand models really fast when they're very small. Uh, so what we see here are some summary, uh, some summary, some like uh, aggregation of the thousand fits. So we see the here's the estimate, lower upper estimate, lower upper. Um, but we also have so we can you know we can see from here. Ah, looks like coaching flag. The, um, we do see evidence that there's more counts and in the, when the dating flag looks like we don't see evidence, right? Cause this can include zero, but it will be, we'll be able to see it easier if we make a visualization and I want to make a visualization of all the replicates so that we can, um, see, we can really see it for ourselves. So if I take these intervals and then I am going to, um, I'm going to, for a plot, I'm going to change what that term looks like. So I'm going to say string remove. I'm going to remove this so that makes a nicer title or uh, label on the plot. And then I will now unnest that replicates column. So now it looks like this. So instead of two rows, now I have 2,002 rows because it unnested all these replicates. And you can see this is for this term, what's the estimate? What's the estimate? What's the estimate? So we fit 
We fit a thousand models to a thousand resamples of this teeny tiny data set, and we have all these estimates here. And so now we can put that on a plot. So we'll say um, estimate, let's say fill equals term like this. And then we can do a little histogram again. Um, let's do some, let's like something like this and like so. And this will put, so if I did this, it would be put on the same plot. Let's instead put these separate. So I'll say vars term like that. Nice. And let's, let's use another, let's use that, um, Let's use that, what did I, what was it called? It was called like accent, accent. Let's use accent like that. No, that's not right. Um, we can go back to dark too. That's certainly not, oh, palette. Palette equals accent like that. Okay, nice. Um, so this is good, but I would really like the zero on this plot. So let's add that. I'm going to use V line. I'll put it underneath the histogram. So V line. Um, so I'm going to put the X intercept. So it'll be at zero like that. So there's zero line. And let me make that just look a little nicer. I'll say line with 1.2. Let's make it dashed and let's make it gray like that. Okay, nice. Okay, so what does this tell us? Um, the thousand replicates that we have for coaching, the estimate is all above zero. Like it's pretty much all above zero. So this means we have strong evidence that um, the counts are higher in the um, the counts are higher in the episodes where Roy Kent is coaching. So he uses his favorite word here more when he's coaching. The, if we look at dating there, the sort of histogram is kind of centered actually around zero. Like um, it's, it's, you know, zero is squarely within this histogram. So that what this means is that we don't have evidence that the counts are different in the episodes where Roy and Keeley are dating. So I think this is such a nice example of how to use bootstrap confidence intervals. And this is, you know, like this is not that much code and you can get really get a lot of information without too much effort. All right, we did it. This is a great example to keep in mind for the next time you are in the situation when you think, this data set is too small. I'm not going to be able to measure the, the effect that I really need to. You can, instead of being frustrated, you can use bootstrap confidence intervals, which are so to be able to estimate the kind of things that you want to. Also, be sure to remember Poisson regression. Keep that as, um, uh, as an option that you know is available to you. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.